Welcome to this tech tip of HCAM. In this tech tip, we will be looking into the world of a user who wants to transition from a free access world into a five access world. So let us begin with both areas of free access as well as five access before we actually start in HCAM to demonstrate HCAM can help you make it as simple and as smooth as possible to transition from a free access world into a five access world. Let's look at some of these areas. Highlighted in red is some downsides for the use of free access machining. Long tool protrusion due to limitations of machining in a free access world. And you normally require multiple setups and these can become very costly. Unfortunately, the kinematic of a free access will increase cycle times due to capabilities. The maintenance comes at a lower cost as it is easier to maintain and suits the medium sized business. With simple geometries, it is ideal for straightforward parts or design components of minimal complexity. So let us focus a bit on the green zones for five axis milling. Um, it is capable of machining complex parts and it will also be able to give you reduced tool protrusion. And a great benefit of this is the fact that it will reduce your setup times and the main purpose of a five axis is the better surface finish that you will achieve due to tool protrusion and uh, the fact that the tool will be nice and short and it will decrease tool vibration in the spindle this brings efficiency also in the workplace and it will give you less waste as well as scrap due to the precision However, we don't want to be mistaken. Um, both types of milling, free or five axis, have its advantages depending on the specific requirements of the project. But for this tech tip, we will be diving into the transition from the free to the five axis. So let's move over to HCAM. So we find ourselves with a situation where tool protrusion comes into consideration and achieving a good surface finish. And in this deep cavity or pocket, we need to get quite deep down into it. And on a free access machine, this would be a limitation uh, due to that cavity and the tool protrusion that's sticking out quite far. And this is where the vibration will come into play. So what we want to do is convert a user who's used to free access who's now purchased maybe a 5 axis or who has a 5 axis in the factory but is not 100% sure of how he can convert from 3 axis to 5 axis and this is where edge cam really comes into play and if we even go and simulate this as it comes to the finishing operation is that tool sticking out quite far and um, where the vibration will take place and this will affect obviously now a reduced feed rate and rpm and things and this is then where the increase in cycle time comes into play so you get those two red zones tool protrusion and cycle time increase because of the kinematic limitation where if we now had to convert this pocket over to a five axis um, situation we can use the shorter tool and improve cycle time and obviously surface finish we use that same pocket area or the same component but we move this over to a five axis scenario or to a five axis machine um, out of good practice then created an index move and just a wrap it with an x and y position uh, just x y center what we've then done uh, implemented that same profile cycle so if you zoom in however we used a different tool now when we go to a front view but this will obviously create the collision because the tool protrusion isn't long enough so if we had to simulate the tool path and this is now where we would like some tilt to take place within edge gun so a nice way of doing it is to use uh, the edge cam 3 to 5 axis cycle so under the milling cycles you will see down here it's one called 3 to 5 axis uh, edge cam will do now is use the core values of the 3 axis cycle but where the collision of the 3 axis would have taken place 
5-axis it will now tilt over and create a 5-axis motion there. So it will start machining in a 3-axis world. It, edge cam then knows at that point that it needs to tilt the weights to prevent collision. And this is exactly what we will do now. We want to tilt the tool at a certain degree, say 75, and we can maintain the tilt angle all the way through, but we don't want to. We just want to create minimum tilt. So we want the tool only to tilt when it's really required, which is really good in edge cam. But what we then have at this stage is we can give it a maximum tilt value that we also allow it to tilt in between so we get that flexibility um, we can then increase some feeds and speeds eh? and we can just say okay to that so what it will ask me now is for a check surface so the check surface is the area that we want a collision check against so i'll just select a solid model in down in my feature tree and i say okay and now edgecam will then recalculate or rework that profiling cycle into a three to five axis cycle but with the core engine of the profiling cycle taking still ownership of the behavior of the toolpath we are now in the front view and we can now simulate this toolpath and we can see that three axis is still core and then the tilt starts to take place as it moves further down the pocket but the benefit of that is you don't need a lot of five axis knowledge to be able to do that because edge can take care of that so if you're very well known in these cycles it's probably a good way of starting off in edge cam just to use your three axis cycles and then just rework or convert it from a three to a five axis so we can now simulate and we can see the tool clearly moving into motion where it behaves with three axis and then as the three axis is then starting to get close to that top surface of the component the engine behind edge cam will take ownership and convert that three to five axis a really powerful and a really simple way of removing any collision that you would have got from your free axis cycle